How to make wet felted roses. Again, <laughs> more tips, more tricks and more details. I'm going to make these lovely orange roses. So I've made three roses altogether, including that pink one. How do I go about mixing the colours? So you can do this by hand, just by going slowly and teasing the wool apart, or you can use a pair of carders like these ones. These are small carders. So I have added some yellow wool, some red wool, um, some white wool into the mix. And because orange is the complement of blue, I have added in some blue to the leaves or to the wool I'm going to use for the leaves. So first of all, we lay out the rose, put a little bit of detergent onto a strip of thin plastic bag. That is the right height for the metal tube you're going to use. You can also use a plastic piece of plastic irrigation pipe I think would work really well and see how that dark blue has blended with the green first of all I lay down a lot of light colors because this is going to be the outside of the rose and so when the light hits it the outside petals which are also the oldest petals are often a lighter color as the rose moves in towards the center, you'll notice that I'm not making the pile so high or so deep. It's really important that you can see the plastic bag through the wool. This looks like quite a generous amount, but really it isn't. You'll see that as soon as I pat it down. And unlike any other felting, we're not going to add in a different um, direction wool will felt fine just in one direction it won't be very thick but it will felt wetting it down so as the wool gets wetted down with the spray bottle it's just got some water with a little bit of detergent in it you can see that effect even more clearly there's a mix of colors I like to think of it as painting with wool And as it gets towards the center of the rose, it gets darker. So those dull colors I was using to try to mimic a shadow, which would be at the center of the rose. Now this motion is one I've learned the hard way. If I just put my hand down and pull up, the wool will come with it. One of the edges of this plastic bag is straight. And that's the edge to use for your rolling up of the tube. Otherwise, the whole thing is going to go wonky and you waste too much wool at the bottom end. So this is how I do it. There's a lot of water on that table at the moment from all of the spraying. And just to save a little bit of time, I just prod the leaves into a shape. Notice they're not all together. I want them to come out on different sides of the rows into a jug of blood temperature soapy water or a little bit cooler than that but um, I put some olive oil soap but first of all you would have seen me letting the all of the excess water dribble out so first task is to pat down the end pat all the, that wool down to the end now these fibers are lying across each other and they will felt beautifully and that gives us a lovely base to the rose that you can use to attach a pin or something like that to it and I have to keep pushing it forward because as I am patting it it's slipping backwards you'll see what I mean when you when you do this for yourself Next, I take the foot off an old stocking and I have tied it up with two rubber bands and tied it at the top.
this sort of um, plastic matting for cupboards and drawers is perfect for this task because it's quite stiff and the little bubbles on it act as a, a great filter because they get the wool moving ever so slightly. Now a big question that people would like to know is how long do you have to roll it for? What I did this time, what I timed it, and now I think I can safely say to you that if you do this sort of action, keep moving it around, prodding it, about an hour of that. Now leave it overnight. I'm going down to the beach to watch the sun set in the west. I hope you like this video. Please subscribe if you do. I would love to have some subscribers. So the next day, back to it. This time though, I am trying to get all of the soap out of the rows because that ends up being quite a problem. Probably because I'm too generous with the soap in the first place. So here, I'm not sure if this rose is ready yet, but I'm going to take it undone and sneak a look. So when you tie it in that stocking, make sure you tie it loosely. Hold it on with the rubber bands. The bottom is definitely felted. Tick. Now let's open up and check out one of the leaves. Is it done? Yes, it is. It's nicely felted. But here's the thing, another tip. The leaves and petals on the outside of the tube will felt the most. So when you get to the inside of the rows, it may not be felted so well and you might have to do a little bit more work by hand. See how thin the petals are? That's what we want. We want that sort of thinness. And even though I separated those petals, they're now stuck together. So I just use my scissors. Now you will also notice that every time I use the scissors, I go back and work that edge so it doesn't look like a cut edge. When you pull down each of the petals, you also have a choice to pull the petal down so that it folds outside toward you or inside. You can fold it over and then you'll have quite a tight little rose and they're just as attractive, they're just different. At the moment, I think I'm into loose <laughs> for some reason. And as I come around, I have to decide where the cut for each of the petals is going to be. When I made my first roses, I didn't cut them at all. I just let it wind around and um, it always looked fine. But you do get a different product if you make some cuts and work it. See, it comes out of that tube so much easier if you go down the other end. Now this has had all the um, soap washed out of it. So now I'm going back in. This looks like a dangerous thing to do, but it isn't. So I'm cutting it back to the base because I know that everything is attached really well at the base. Now, because this isn't fooled and it's not fully felted, which is probably the same thing as being fooled, it's still got flexibility in it. So I'm just going to pull that petal into a petal shape and trim it off so that some leaves are not a lot bigger than other leaves. Because that's what happens if you don't do any trimming. Have a look at some roses and study them. Now, what you'll see me doing in a moment is if I'm not careful, 
all the petals will fall sort of on top of each other as they come out of the shape. So I have to make a conscious decision to find the space there. See, there's a space between those two bottom petals. So I want to make the petal on top of it fall in between that space. Again, just randomly cutting it into a petal sort of shape. I think it would be quite hard to do that first because you have to be able to see each of the petals <clears throat> in relation to each other. Can you see there's a bit of a shimmer on that wall? That's from the silk. And of course we don't want to cut off any more than we need to. We didn't do all that work on it to throw it away. Getting closer to the centre now. So we just keep working it, keep pulling it out. Now when you get to this middle bit you can start tucking it inside. It's like a little cave in there or something. And I just twirl it around with my fingers. Sometimes you might also get the, um, the bamboo stick to do that. Some sort of stick thing that won't catch. So you can twirl that. Later on, you could always put a, um, a stitch into parts of the rose to hold it exactly where you want it to go. Now, I've made four petals, um, four petals. I have made four leaves on this rose. So I'm making one of the other leaves into a bit of a stick or a bit of a dead petal, just for interest. Now this is where the rose is up to at this stage and I think it looks pretty nice. Finishing the rose. This is the second part of our video and already you can say that I am using a hair straightener. I'm using the hair straightener to do two things here. One of the things I'm doing is I'm ironing each of the petals because felt looks quite different once you have pressed it. And obviously I can't press it with an, a normal iron. So I thought, what about using the hair straighteners? They work really well. But here's another tip. Do this at this point, not after you have used any glue. I tried that today and the glue that I'm using is a plastic sort of adhesive and while it's perfectly safe, it certainly doesn't smell too good when you um, heat it up with one of the curling irons. There's the two roses. They're still pretty damp. You can also just get a hairdryer and hold it in your hand and dry it with the hairdryer. But having this a little bit wet at this point is not a bad thing. So this glue comes out like very heavy cream. It's heavy. I'm sure you have it wherever you live. It's a pretty international product. It's great for this because it is water soluble. One day if your rose gets dirty, you can actually just wash it and redo the gluing part. It's not for gluing anything, it's just for stiffening. It's a very useful stiffener. So you can see I'm putting quite a generous amount of this glue because actually that bowl is made up more of water than it is of glue. Probably no more than a tablespoon of glue would do both roses once it's diluted. This glue really gives the petals the body to stand up straight. So we get that lovely three dimensional effect. Now 
Now, the, le the leaves the leaves and the petals kind of need to be cooled again so that they can dry in place as to how I want them to be. So this was the idea I came up with today, to use a whole lot of coloured pencils to sort of be the curlers for each of the petals. And there they are. There's quite a lot of variety in the light and shade. And see that shimmer? That's the silk. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching.